stealth mechanics in Elite Dangerous have always felt a bit undercooked. Even years later, the game has still failed to provide meaningful incentive or capability for ships to engage in hide-and-seek gameplay, and this really takes away from the different possibilities for dynamic encounters that can only come from having the ability to hide from people who might be looking for you. For those who may be unaware, the current iteration of stealth gameplay in Elite is based on your ship's heat profile, where a high heat threshold causes your ship to be detectable at greater ranges, up to your sensor's maximum range, which varies based on the size and grade of your equipped sensor. This is reflected under your ship's typical emissions range, which is an indicator of how detectable an object is at average heat output, which is believed to be between 30 and 50 percent. I say believed because at the time of writing, I've yet to locate any firm documentation as to how detectability curves work in Elite, so much of this is left to player experimentation, which you can brush up on in my heat mechanics video. Stealth seems simple on the surface, but its underlying mechanics are actually very difficult to balance in context because of the fairness doctrine of game design. Put simply, the fairness doctrine requires that players be given some opportunity to counter an aggressor, which is clearly communicated, and offers some fair chance for players under attack to respond. A good example of this doctrine is the addition of lens flare effects to sniper rifles in most shooter games which serves to discourage camping, and offers targeted players the ability to see they are targeted and the location of the attacker. Lens flares for tactical combat are a great way to balance the power of extreme range weapons, because the disincentive is integrated into the specific use of the weapon. The lens only flares when a player is looking down their scope, so players using the sniper rifle are incentivized not to look down their scope all the time, but wait until they see a target, and then only look down their scope as long as is necessary to take the shot. The faster a given player can scope and fire, the less opportunity the defender has to respond. It also encourages the sniper to move and fire, or work with a fire team to cover their stationary position. Stealth, in most shooter games, is a purely positional matter. It's all about lines of sight, positioning, and wise movement plays, with occasional assistance by some limited in-game tools. Destiny 2, for example, allows players properly equipped to vanish from radar for no longer than 10 seconds. Their visual profile is also masked, but poorly, making it ineffective except at long ranges or when the opponent is visually impaired. Call of Duty allows for decoys and the silencing of noises that players might make while moving. Halo has active camouflage and radar jammers that can obscure movement and distort signals which players rely on for target tracking. Elite Dangerous offers a much more dynamic sandbox for engagement, by virtue of its clunky but still present combined arms system, a system which I intend to give its own video treatment soon. Put simply, any new stealth mechanics need to be unified across ground, vehicle, and aerospace combat but that leaves the core question of where to begin. Heat is the current core of detectability in ships, and is the implied primary means of detection for both SRVs and foot mobiles. In practice, I don't believe this is how detectability actually works in ground combat, given SRVs can resolve infantry targets at pretty significant distances through walls and other obstructions around settlements. And further, given that we have zero indication of our suit's heat capacity or other detectability stats while on the ground. Which means that the first place which we should start with stealth is the communication of our stealth to other players and to ourselves. You have to know how detectable you are before you can know how to respond to a given situation. This is missing entirely from the ground game in Elite Dangerous, and is only partially implemented in vehicle and ship gameplay. Currently, in SRVs and ships, we are given two tools to gauge our detectability. The thermostat, positioned next to our radar, which measures our heat capacity in percentage, and the signature bar, positioned above a ship's fuel gauge, which ostensibly indicates how detectable we are to other ships or vehicles in the area. In practice, 
the signature bar is a useless bit of visual flair that most players aren't even aware does anything but flicker like an audio equalizer to a song that we never hear. Neither one of these gauges gives any player the proper context they need to understand when they are detectable, especially to contacts they might not be able to see directly. Though, like many systems in the game, they do provide a working foundation which we can improve upon. The following are some specific recommendations. As currently implemented, the thermostat does not enable us to understand heat as it relates to different vehicles. The thermostat gauge should be divided into sections, like the throttle has been, which indicate to the player how many units of heat their ship is generating, measured in whichever variable the game uses to determine heat, e.g. Celsius, Kelvin, or BTU. A version of this should be made available to the Odyssey suits. Sensor modules should reflect their typical emissions range by communicating at least what temperature the typical emission is. Ideally, the game UI should provide a chart which shows at what range a given temperature can be fully resolved. The minimum detectability threshold for a given sensor should also be communicated on its stat page, e.g. how cold does something need to be in order to be undetectable. This limitation can be balanced to prevent a ship from firing directly or accurately on players in Odyssey suits. It can also provide a means by which players in SRVs or suits can become detectable under the right conditions to ships or other types of vehicles. The signature UI and radar needs additional functions. It should communicate to the player how detectable they are with context-aware estimates for ranges of detection. It should communicate to the player when they have been targeted and by what ship. It should communicate to the player the awareness of settlements and other stations to their positions. It should communicate to the player whether they have been identified by local authorities, e.g. whether a crime committed can be attributed to them. The last suggestion should give you a good idea where I'm heading here, since stealth should touch all aspects of a given game. This means, of course, that the way NPC interaction is handled needs to change as compared to what it is right now. One of the major reasons a player might engage in stealth is because they are trying to avoid identification. For reasons I have not yet determined, crimes committed, in ship or on the ground, are always logged, even if a player is hiding or silent running when they are committed. If you blow up a ship while silent running, you get a murder bounty, even if the other ship was alone and had not managed to scan you. If you knock off an NPC on Odyssey, even if not seen or identified by security, you still get a murder bounty. One of the big problems with stealth gameplay in Elite Dangerous is that the AI in this game could not give less of a crap about your silent running or stealthy movements. Once you have been visually identified in the AI pilot sight cone, that pilot always knows where you are, whether silent running or not. As a result, the toggle for silent running may as well not exist at all when it comes to fighting bots. Whereas when fighting players, the loss of targeting and sensor markers can result in you as the pilot losing track of where a target went, making protracted PvP engagements against stealth-outfitted ships a rare and challenging encounter. It should always be possible for a player to lose aggression from a hostile ship by hiding from sensors or staying out of its visual cone for long enough. Smugglers in Elite Dangerous have it particularly bad, as it's effectively impossible to avoid being seen by at least one security ship on entering a station security zone. This fact transforms smuggling into an outright sprint to the station airlock in defiance of any common sense logic when it comes to what smuggling is actually like. Sneaking cargo past a security bottleneck and through the various bureaucracies that surround any meaningful border. True enough, blockade running is a thing smugglers do, but most smuggling is a matter of paperwork and subterfuge, either by avoiding the ports altogether and sneaking goods directly to the customer, as in the drug trades along the American southern border, or by forging customs paperwork to hide contraband within legitimate shipments. Odyssey provides a unique opportunity to do this by way of the settlement system. 
It's been said that settlements are where most of the economic front end happens in every system. They are the place where commodities are actually produced before being forwarded onto the stations in a system. They have weaker defenses and fewer patrol ships, with a more relaxed security posture overall, making them ideal candidates for the black markets we currently interact with at stations, and the perfect place to offload smuggled goods away from the prying eyes of system security, especially if smuggling involves building a network of hidden pirate settlements, where this kind of trade is the principal reason for the settlement's existence. That topic will have to be covered in a separate video. For the smugglers themselves, stealth gameplay should be focused on the following. 1. The modification of cargo to disguise it as something else. The disguising of cargo should be based on two things. A sensor baffler, which can trick cargo scans. A ratio of legal and illegal cargo, where the more illegal cargo a ship carries, the more likely it is that the sensor baffler will fail. The ratio of legal to illegal cargo that a sensor baffler can hide should change based on the size and grade of the module. Sensor bafflers should not appear in a given ship's loadout when scanned, or could allow the player to disguise the sensor baffler as something else. Smugglers transporting cargo below the safe ratio are essentially immune to detection, so this safe ratio should be low to encourage risk. A possible maximum safe ratio, assuming a large baffler and A-rated grade, could be one-third or 33% of the total cargo capacity. 2. The evasion of security patrols in supercruise. This brings me to an important topic regarding supercruise as a whole, most of which will need to be its own video. Supercruise as a whole was a late idea that has long begged for greater depth, since most of its functionality was intended as a placeholder for later improvement. As a result, Supercruise is a fairly anemic segment of the game, with a lot of room for improvement. For the purposes of this video, my focus is directed squarely at the complete lack of stealth in Supercruise. Every other part of the game features at least some primitive form of stealth, and Supercruise desperately needs it. As currently implemented, everything within a certain distance around you in Supercruise is always detectable, no matter its heat, speed, disposition, and without regard to line of sight. All of these things should change. The following are suggestions to detectability in supercruise. Make the supercruise markers that indicate ships change based on their heat. A vessel with a cold running setup should be fainter and draw a shorter light trail while traversing in supercruise. Speed of movement should affect power draw and heat generated by both the power plant and frameshift drive. Higher throttle settings should result in higher temperatures and therefore a greater degree of detectability. The maximum safe approach speed, currently 75% throttle, should be the best mix of speed per unit of heat generated. Lower speeds would precipitously reduce heat and power draw with diminishing returns down to the minimum SC speed of 30 km per second. Make the corona around a star too hot for sensors to work properly. Any ship too close won't be able to see anything except its immediate surroundings, no greater than 10 megameters. This will provide limited cover for players to regroup after wing jumps. It enables players to reorient towards their destination, before risking being detected and attacked, and will discourage cluster ganks by allowing defending ships to gain momentum or depart the system. As ships depart the area around a star, sensors should begin to be able to resolve them as the environmental heat declines. One final topic of discussion is the nature of stealth-based loadouts, which, at the time of writing, are severely underdeveloped. Increasing the depth and usefulness of stealth will make loadouts that emphasize stealth gameplay more common. Thus far, the suggestions I've made have been mostly general in nature, with the exception of the sensor baffler. Specialization has been a common theme in Elite Dangerous, which has maintained a strong trade-off structure in the way ships can be set up. Stealth, in modern military parlance, is a highly specialized arena that often requires exchanging raw combat capacity for the ability to penetrate signal-based defenses. All ships have the ability to silently run, 
but a possible change to this mechanic is to increase the absolute detection range for ships not specialized in stealth, making them easier to find at greater distances. Stealth composites could be added as an armor which reduces this absolute detection range, increases overall heat capacity, and provides an increase of hull HP, approximately equivalent to the reinforced alloy armor, but with a resistance hull that affects all three damage types. Additional tools could also be considered, which augment the UI of Elite Dangerous to provide more information about a ship's detectability, giving the player more advanced warning about incoming scans, ranges of typical detection, and absolute detection for targeted ships, as well as advanced tools for reconnaissance of settlements, like the salvage scanner discussed in the Grind and Economy video, as well as tools for tracking ships between systems or within them. Stealth ships will naturally favor ambush or hit-and-run tactics, which in turn will mean that these ships will favor weapons that are easy to use, possess a high operational range, deal incredible DPS, and could, if used correctly, destroy much larger targets. Missiles, torpedoes, and mines are the ideal candidates for vessels so equipped, but that topic will have to wait for its own video. These are all ideas and concepts that I believe will greatly enhance the current stealth mechanics and encourage players to return to Elite Dangerous from competing products. It's my hope that they will be considered, and that some of these might be implemented over time. If you think I've missed something, or have an idea for future topics, please feel free to let me know in the comments below.